Yeah, you know, I, I encountered that question a lot. Um, there's a lot of pathologizing of, uh, of extremely moral behavior. Um, I don't think they're addicted, and I don't think they are competitive. There are probably some people who, are, who fit the profile that you've uh, sketched, but not the people I wrote about. And for one thing, um, they weren't competitive because they had no peers. There was no one, you know, all of them um, for much of their lives felt completely isolated. Uh, there were, they, they were considered uh, at best uh, bizarre and misguided and at worst positively bad. I mean, uh, one of the central themes of the book is uh, the conflict between caring for family and caring for strangers. And I think most people now, uh, I have an argument that I think that's changed, um, but most people now find it not only strange but unnatural and wrong to care for strangers at the expense of your own people. You know, you can, you can do a little bit, go volunteer in your homeless shelter once a week or give a little bit to charity, but not so it hurts, not so it actually affects the people you, um, you love. And so these are people who uh, have an extraordinary, extraordinarily strong sense of self. Uh, they are internally driven. They are prepared. It's not that it doesn't hurt them when their friends find them baffling or bizarre, but they, uh, they do what they think is right no matter what people say to them. And so to say that they are competitive would just be wrong because who are they competing with? None of these people knew each other. And, um, you know, in terms of addicted, uh, I really reject that, though. Um, there is a theory that I read. I mean, most, most of the psychoanalytic and psychological academic literature does characterize uh, people who um, push morality to an extreme as somehow pathological because uh, the basic model of humans is that they are selfish and so anything that deviates from that basic model uh, is needs to be explained and much, much of the literature I just did not find helpful but there is one theory that I did find interesting um, which 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 was called the um, the theory of the parentified child and there this is the idea that a child who grows up in a household with at least one parent who d is not functioning as a parent, either because they're alcoholic or they're severely mentally ill or for some reason like that. Uh, and obviously most of the time this messes the kid up, but sometimes uh, the child will just be very driven to try to fix his family. So he will either become a perfect student or learn how to cook dinner or take care of his younger siblings, take care of the parent. And the idea is that this child may grow up to have an outsized sense of responsibility to try to fix the world as he tried to fix his family as a kid. And at first I thought, you know, bah, this is just another one of these pathologizing theories. And then I thought, actually, not everyone in my book, but almost everyone in my book does fit this profile. So I do think there's something to that. On the other hand, where I want to push back on the addiction model is it's true that these people do feel uh, to some extent compelled to do the work they do. But then imagine another kid who grows up in a wonderful family with two great parents who instill in that kid a sense of responsibility to take care of others because they think it's the right thing to do. That other child is going to grow up feeling equally compelled. And so is one sense of responsibility more right or true or free than the other? I'm not sure. And so I think for me, the question is not to what degree they are compelled. You know, you have to have a pretty strong model of free will to think that's the relevant question anyway. The question to me is, are they right?